Hey, it's Jordan with the Young Turks, uh, here with Senator Ron Wyden of the great state of Oregon. Uh, DNC, third night, and uh, you were with the delegation yesterday during roll call. Uh, tell me about your experience this week. Obviously, there's some divisions going on. There's uh, the Hillary Clinton uh, supporters, delegates, um, and surrogates who want to unify against Donald Trump. Um, I've spoken to a lot of Bernie Sanders delegates, uh, supporters who feel they're kind of being treated as props. Um, how do you think things are coming together? I, I do think that things are coming together, and there's an awful lot of common ground uh, to build around. For example, in my primary, because I'm up for election uh, this, uh, this year, I was perhaps the only Democrat in the country who ran an advertisement that praised both Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders, and what I praised them for was their support of a public option for health care. That's hugely important if you're going to hold down uh, the costs of insurance and prescription uh, drugs. Senator Sanders helped me get the state option through as part of the Affordable Care Act. Secretary Clinton has come out for it. When you have two candidates who, for example, are willing to come together around a major issue that I know your uh, viewers care an awful lot about, a public option for health care to be able to take on the insurance companies and drug companies, that's a sign we got a lot to work with. I'm going to keep it real. Uh, a lot of our viewers don't trust Secretary Clinton. She's changed positions a lot. Obviously, politicians do in general. But uh, she called TPP the gold standard. She's evolved on a lot of things. Uh, they feel that she's kind of doing the whole Clinton triangulation thing. Uh, you know Secretary Clinton. Uh, I, I believe you served, served in the Senate with her. I did. Uh, tell my viewers why they're wrong. First of all, on the major issues, Secretary Clinton and Senator Sanders have been together for years and years. For example, if you're talking about privatization of Social Security, Secretary Clinton and uh, Senator Sanders have been there. If you're talking, for example, about a major investment in roads and bridges and transportation systems. I've been pleased to work with both of them. I authored the Build America Bonds uh, program. Mm -hmm. um, if you're talking about making college more affordable, again, you can debate some of the specifics of their uh, two approaches, but both of them have been there on the biggest domestic issues, certainly, of our time, and uh, I'm glad to see it. And uh, you're obviously very active in all things the internet, um, uh, cybersecurity, um, intelligence. There's some things coming on, uh, coming up that are important in September. Uh, tell me about uh, what we should be concerned about in terms of uh, cybersecurity, uh, in intelligence, all those kinds of things. There are several really major issues, and they're going to all come to a head uh, in September. And one of the things that concerns me is because there's going to be so much on the calendar. Right. My concern is that some of the people who really are tilting towards the surveillance state are going to have their way. And let me tick them off. Senator Burr, he's the chairman of the Intelligence Committee, is advocating weakening strong encryption. I think that would be a huge mistake. He wants to require American companies to build back doors into their products. The American people would be less safe if Senator Burr has his way. For example, I bet a lot of your viewers uh, tonight have uh, much of their well-being wrapped up in their smartphone, their financial yeah. and medical you know, records. They will be less safe, and of course they'll have less liberty, and a lot of the hackers and terrorists will just go overseas. Right. So I have promised my constituents I will filibuster Senator Burr's bill to weaken strong encryption, but he's made it clear he's going to push that in September. That's issue number one. Issue number two is the FBI is pushing very hard to be able to look at the browsing history of your uh, viewers without court oversight. Right. I am very opposed uh, to that. We were able to hold it off during the month of July. It's going to be a very tough fight again in September. It was on the McCain uh, amendment. We barely held on. Nobody thought we had a shot. But if you're talking about getting access to the browsing history of your viewers without court oversight, you are really talking about getting access to some of the most intimate thoughts 
of your viewers, and I think there ought to be a process that protects the due process rights of your viewers. And finally, the third issue is really under the radar and really high stakes. There is an effort underway to essentially, by an administrative process, allow one judge in one jurisdiction to authorize a hack of what could be hundreds of thousands of computers. Mm -hmm. And this will go into effect in December unless the Congress passes legislation to block it. I've introduced a bipartisan bill in the Senate, it's called the SMH mm -hmm. Act, shaking my head, right. uh, to block something like that that would authorize such a mass uh, hack. It's been a bipartisan bill in the House. It is really urgent that we get support for that this summer, first couple of weeks in September, because we've got to block it by uh, December 1. And uh, when you look at the uh, you know, war against ISIS and these things, uh, Hillary Clinton, she's been called a neocon, all these things, Donald Trump, a lot of people think he could start World War III, but obviously things are different now because a lot of uh, people already in America are being inspired on social media, online. Uh, we've heard that the FBI and uh, our intelligence are overloaded. Um, and there's this new element where you have to monitor uh, chatter on social, on Twitter, Facebook, all these things. Uh, whether it's uh, Secretary Clinton, Donald Trump, um, how do how do you how does things evolve so we can tighten things up? You look at San Bernardino, you look at uh, these Orlando. A lot of these things were uh, there was an element of social media involved. First of all, the American people in a dangerous world want policies that protect their security and their liberty. Right. And I just ticked off some examples that, in effect, give us less of both. For example, if you really want to protect our country against these cyber hacks, and certainly there's a real threat of extremists uh, engaging in that, the best way to do it is to have strong encryption. Right. That's what really holds them back. Now, there are other reforms that I advocate. In particular, if you look at the workforce in the intelligence community, it is aging very rapidly. There are many people retiring. We badly need young people who speak foreign languages, who are capable of quickly uh, adapting to other cultures, and that's going to be a priority of mind as well on the Intelligence Committee. And uh, lastly, obviously hanging over this, uh, WikiLeaks came out with all sorts of emails from the DNC. Debbie Wasserman Schultz has resigned. They've apologized to Senator Sanders. The DNC has. Uh, Sanders supporters are, are outraged. Uh, a lot of them were kind of called conspiracy theorists for even suggesting the DNC was actively working against Senator Sanders. Uh, what do you think needs what What do you think needs to happen? Well, because all, to me, these emails show uh, more than just about this election, but it shows that uh, they didn't really t they didn't actively uh, consider uh, an insurgent candidate as a plausible option for them. Let me comment on the emails and then about the yeah. Sanders movement yeah. generally. First of all, the pattern of statements and what we've seen in these emails is absolutely unacceptable for the DNC. This is not rocket science. Yeah. The standard, the requirement, is impartiality. And these statements clearly reflect that that was not the case. Now, I, I believe that there would have been a change anyway in the cycle, but clearly the statements that came out over the weekend accelerated it, and right. that was appropriate. Now, let me comment for a moment on the Sanders supporters, mm -hmm. because uh, Senator Sanders won my state. You were out there yeah. uh, covering it. Enormous grassroots enthusiasm, mm -hmm. and I was one of the co-chairs of the Oregon delegation here in Philadelphia with my friend Senator Merkley, who, as right. you know, uh, had supported uh, Senator Sanders. The only senator who endorsed him. Yeah. That's correct. And when I was at the breakfast, we opened the uh, group on Tuesday, a couple of the delegates asked me, what's your statement to the young members of the delegation who supported Senator Sanders? And after a year or so of trying to think of how I could sum it up, it just hit me as I was walking up to the podium. I started off by saying I've got something I want to say to all of those 
who supported Senator Sanders in this campaign. And they all saw the commercial I ran, praising him for things like the public option. And I said, I want all of you to know that as our state's senior senator, I feel very strongly that what we've seen in Oregon with all of you and the Sanders movement should not be a one-off, right. and it needs to continue. And I conveyed, it's my hope, that all of those who supported Senator Sanders, all those young people, all that energy and enthusiasm and passion, I hope they'll get involved in party committees. I've indicated that my hope is that some of them will want to be interns mm -hmm. in my offices in both Oregon and in Washington, D.C. I believe that what we saw with the Sanders movement in Oregon over this last year, year and a half, is that that will be much of the strength of the party in the years ahead. And I want to use this show, particularly the Young Turks, I've enjoyed it, uh, and you've uh, covered a lot of our work on, on various uh, projects. I want the message to go out all across the country to young supporters of Senator Sanders that I want to make sure that what they did this year is not a one-off mm -hmm. and that they build on it. We're going to win this election. They build on it in 2017 by being involved in party work, working with uh, progressive uh, congressional members and candidates. Great. And thank you for uh, always fighting for our security, our freedom, and our privacy. Thank uh, you. Thanks a lot. Look forward to being back on your show. Have a good one. All right, man.